Welcome to NEXT 2022. I'm Jordan Hamilton, a staff solutions architect focused on Cloud Bigtable. And I'm Akshita, a software engineer at Box. And today, we'll be hearing about Box and their modernization journey from an on-prem NoSQL database to Cloud Bigtable. Today, we'll be covering a brief intro on Bigtable and modernization patterns. Then we'll hand it over to Akshata, where she will share more about Box's exciting journey and cover why they chose Bigtable, insights on migrations, and review where they are at today with their production workloads on Bigtable. Then we'll wrap it up with available migration tools and what's next. Before we learn about Box's modernization, let's first review Bigtable with a high-level overview of what it is and why it's a common key value store for production workloads and modernization. Google has had to deal with a lot of data considering its mission statement and its many consumer products. It needed petabyte scale capacity to store the data that was continually evolving and changing schema over time. If you think about some of the use cases at Google and the data it had to store, you're likely thinking about electronic messages or email, geographic information, URL contents, and per user data, all that required high volumes and extremely fast access. Google developed Bigtable in 2004 to handle both the scale and precision accuracy needed. It was then released to production in 2005, and the paper came out a year later. Bigtable, the same Bigtable that we made available to our cloud customers in 2015, is really behind several of the billion user consumer services that you may use today with Search, Analytics, Maps, and Gmail. Bigtable continues to grow and has more than 10 exabytes of data under management and serves over 5 billion queries per second. It's a fully managed key value database, and our average cloud customers who are coming from on-prem or other clouds are achieving stable performance with millisecond latencies and millions of qu queries per second. Bigtable fully embraces open source by providing an open API with Apache HBase, making it open source friendly and workload portable. Many of the open source distributed systems that you may be familiar with are modeled off of technologies innovated at Google. Specifically, with open source NoSQL databases, actually a family tree of them, drew inspiration from Bigtable and were developed and began surfacing in 2008. This included the release of Apache HBase along with Apache Cassandra and Apache Accumulo, which was developed by the NSA. All of these key value databases have workloads that are built on NoSQL, and these use cases are usually a good fit for Bigtable. The next place where Bigtable really comes up today, where Box will talk a lot more about, are migrations and modernizing NoSQL workloads with Bigtable. We're seeing many migrations to Cloud Bigtable come from HBase and Cassandra today, although we have supported migrations from other databases, including DynamoDB, Cosmos DB, and even MySQL and Oracle. Bigtable is a great fit for workloads that are key value, like queries with a single row of data or a range of rows. It is also good with wide column and time series, which are use, use cases over the common, these common sources. Of these common sources, let's take a closer look at HBase and what we're seeing with modernizations. It's common to see HBase deployed as part of a distributed ecosystem as it provides integration with services like Kafka, MapReduce, Spark, Spark SQL for streaming, querying, and batch processing. HBase can be co-deployed within a data lake that shares resources within a cluster or deployed as a standalone NoSQL database for an application or service. With minimal changes, we're seeing the stack transform with applications and services remaining in place and the underlying storage and databases being decoupled. Cloud Bigtable provides integration with existing applications and services, provides data compatibility for migrating raw bytes from one to the other, and has minimal changes for namespaces if they're in use. This integration is really great. It allows us to not 
have to rewrite our applications and we can get started with using Bigtable and take advantage of multi-cluster deployments running on Google's dedicated networks, which is quite complex to set up with HBase. Further, as we move into the Google ecosystem, you may continue to run your existing applications and clients with Bigtable, or you may use a native client library based on your favorite language. There are also several other Google Cloud services such as BigQuery SQL on Bigtable with federated queries, Cloud Dataproc for running open source software, including Apache Spark, Dataflow for managed pipelines and a rich integration with the Beam SDK, and TensorFlow for training with ML models on data stored in Bigtable. Next, without further ado, let's have Akshata take us through Box's modernization journey. Thanks, Jordan. Hi again. Let me start with an intro to Box. Box is a content cloud. It enables users to securely create, share, co-edit, and retain their content online. Box is in the process of moving its core infrastructure from on-prem data centers to cloud. And today, I'm going to talk about how we migrated our NoSQL infrastructure to Cloud Bigtable. Let's take a look at a couple of NoSQL use cases at Box specifically the ones which are in the critical path of every user request. These have latency requirements in the order of tens of milliseconds. First, the storage service. This service is responsible for storing every file uploaded to Box in specific regions based on the data residency requirements set on the file. File metadata like location, size, etc. are stored in a NoSQL table and accessed at every download. This table is about 150 terabytes in size and spans over 600 billion rows. A second example is the key encryption service. It encrypts every file uploaded to Box with a unique encryption key. It stores these encryption keys in a NoSQL table, which is about 80 terabytes in size and spans over 200 billion rows. Both the services perform operations like check inputs, gets, and deletes and were hosted on HBase running in Box data centers. So why did we go with Bigtable? Firstly, it takes away the operational burden of managing the infrastructure ourselves. Secondly, Bigtable provides automatic replication with eventual consistency, which is quite similar to HBase. Next, Bigtable provides an HBase compliant library, which means that we could migrate away from HBase with minimal code changes. Also, scaling a Bigtable cluster is effortless and can be achieved in a matter of minutes. Finally, Bigtable offers managed backup and restore features, which are super convenient and also essential for our critical data. Let's look at some choices we made with Bigtable configuration. First decision was for storage type. Here, there are two options, SSD and HDD. SSD is faster than HDD, but more expensive. To help guide the decision, we ran some performance tests that simulated our traffic patterns on both SSD and HDD clusters. We found that latencies from SSD clusters were more in line with our performance requirements, and that's what we went with. The next decision was uh, for the number of clusters. Bigtable allows up to eight replicated clusters in an instance. Having two clusters in a multi-region instance already offers four nines of availability, which was deemed sufficient for our use cases. So we went with the two cluster setup. For comparison though, we used a three cluster HBase setup to achieve similar availability. Next, for routing, we had to decide whether to rely on the automatic multi-cluster routing or go with single cluster routing and handle failover ourselves. We had to go with single cluster routing here because the use of conditional writes in our applications was incompatible with multi-cluster routing. Now let's look at the actual migration process. Given the critical nature of our services, this needed to be a zero downtime migration. That is, we had to migrate without disrupting user traffic and without affecting latencies. First, we performed reads and writes to both Bigtable and HBase. The Bigtable reads and writes here are asynchronous and best effort. This allows us to monitor Bigtable latencies and tune its settings without impacting any user traffic. Second, after we stabilize the Bigtable metrics, we switch to synchronous Bigtable reads and writes. 
This effectively brings Bigtable in the critical path of the user traffic. And this allows us to achieve consistency between Bigtable and HBase for all the newly written data. We learned some interesting lessons from this phase of migration. First, performance testing is worth it. The throughput numbers published by cloud providers are highly dependent on the workload type. So we evaluated Bigtable performance under box workloads as the very first step. This not only gave us confidence to proceed with Bigtable migration, but also informed our configuration choices, like the use of SSD, for example. Second, handle conditional writes with care. The use of conditional writes was incompatible with Bigtable's multi-cluster failover routing. So we had to implement our own automatic failover logic for certain failure scenarios to support our conditional writes without impacting availability. It's also interesting to note that conditional writes may reduce the throughput you can derive from the cluster, and that's a good reason to include them in performance tests beyond just plain puts and gets. Lastly, good debug tools are indispensable. We discovered a few helpful GCP tools in the course of fine-tuning the Bigtable metrics. For example, stack driver tracing provides traces with detailed latency insights at every step of the request. And the key visualizer helps isolate hotspots in the Bigtable key space. In phase two, we perform backfill of old data from HBase to Bigtable and run a series of validations to ensure that the data is consistent. Let's zoom into each of these next. Backfill involves three steps. First, we take a snapshot of the table on HBase. Second, we write the snapshot files to a GCS bucket. For this, we used HBase's export snapshot job in conjunction with Google's open sourced GCS connector. Finally, we load data from GCS into Bigtable using a data proc job. This job was also open sourced by Google. Now let's look at uh, our validation strategies closely. We had to validate both the ongoing traffic as well as the old backfill data. To do these validations, we first built logic in our services to compare the read results between HBase and Bigtable. The results were then carefully categorized into different types and emitted as metrics and logs. For ongoing traffic, this comparison logic was triggered as users accessed our services. For backfill data, we triggered the comparisons explicitly using an internal service that iterates over random key ranges. After analyzing the validation metrics and logs, we found that most of the mismatches were expected or explainable and gave us sufficient confidence in the consistency of data between HBase and Bigtable. We learned some interesting lessons from this phase of migration too. First, we had lots of fine-grained metrics to track everything in HBase and Bigtable. This was super useful in comparing the systems side by side to validate performance as well as correctness. Second, storage utilization on HBase and Bigtable can vary depending on the compression type. In our case, we had to account for additional storage usage on Bigtable during the backfill process. Now we arrive at the final phase of the migration. Here we switch to Bigtable as a source of truth but we continue to write to both HBase and Bigtable in case we need a rollback. After running in the state for a while and having gained sufficient confidence in the new stack, we finally cut ties with HBase. So where are we at now? We no longer need manual interventions by SREs to scale our clusters, and that's been a huge operational relief. We see around 80 millisecond latencies to Bigtable from our on-prem services. We see sub-20 millisecond latencies from our GCP resident services, especially when Bigtable cluster is in the same region. Finally, most of our big NoSQL use cases have been migrated to Bigtable, and I'm happy to report that some have been successfully running for over a year now. With that, I'd like to hand it back over to Jordan. Thank you, Akshata. Next, let's review some available migration capabilities to accelerate your migration. First, Let's quickly review the Bigtable HBase client library, the one that Box used in production to send reads and writes that were previously sent to HBase to Bigtable, as depicted in the diagram here. The library supports HBase 1.x and 2.x clients and may be added to your application in the Java build or as an auxiliary jar. The library can be then be configured to send requests to Bigtable in the HBase site.xml or in the application configuration properties. 
I won't go through the details here, but here are the artifacts for the client library. You'll want to add one of these artifacts, artifact options to your existing application to include the library. Next, here's an example for configuring the library to send requests to Bigtable. Authentication may be set up here using a Google service account by configuring the property with google.bigtable.auth.json key file or setting the Google application credentials environmental variable. Next, let's review tooling for migration approaches. Whether you're able to take downtime for a migration that's offline, as depicted here on the left, or require a zero downtime for your migration similar to box with a live migration as on the right, we now have a set of tools to help simplify and accelerate migrations. We start with offline migration tools that include the schema translator tool to automate table creation on Bigtable with split points from HBase table DDLs, a snapshot import job to batch load the data, and lastly, validation tools to provide byte level comparison. For live migrations, we require the same set of tools, but also require a method to propagate changes while the historical data is being migrated. There are a few options listed here, and of them, we have recently released two tools to provide a solution for live migrations. The first is a dual client called the Mirroring Client Library, and the second extends HBase's replication service to replicate changes from HBase to Cloud Bigtable. The Bigtable mirroring client library is similar to the live migration solution that Box had used for its zero downtime migration. You can follow the same sequence of steps as their migration with this library, and it provides three configuration modes for mirroring writes, with the asynchronous sequential writes, where writes are first committed to HBase and upon success, asynchronously written to Bigtable. The second mode is synchronous sequential writes, and the third configuration is synchronous concurrent writes. It also provides read verification and the ability to specify a fraction of the reads to be replayed on Bigtable to verify consistency. With the next live migration option, we provide a library that extends the HBase replication endpoint and can enable peer replication, which is normally used to replicate from one cluster, HBase cluster, to another, but now can replicate to Bigtable. This approach does not require dual writes, which may be prone to consistency issues, but does require the library to be installed on either the production HBase cluster or a sidecar HBase cluster that is dedicated just for replicating to Bigtable. This library is installed on HBase cluster and can be enabled with the HBase shell. Let's wrap up and cover next steps. You can find more information about migrations in our public docs and the links below. We also have a code lab for walking through migrating to Bigtable. And finally, with features and capabilities, we're looking to help customers build advanced topologies they may require across clouds and on-prem. We're also looking at bi-directional sync with Bigtable changes, change streams, which is coming soon. Lastly, we're continuously looking at minimizing migration differences with HBase and are underway with introducing big table reverse scans early next year, subject to change. With this, we're looking to make migrations easier and more compatible. Thank you, Akshatha, and thank you all for joining us here today. Thank you.